Okay, so this month's topic was dragons, and um, so we ended up with a fairy dragon, um, which didn't surprise me very much at all. Um, and as usual, I put together a whole bunch of images um, as a sort of reference folder, inspiration to sort of decide what I was thinking on. Um, so a bit of cats, raptors, and fruit bats, as you can see. So I picked these images because I liked the poses in them, and I thought I'd do a little doodle over them, see if they worked. This sleeping dragon idea, like I was, I thought was kind of adorable. Um, I also liked the bat hanging upside down. Imagining a little uh, playful fairy dragon hanging upside down. Um, in the end, I think I ended up going with the raptor, um, just because it allowed me to showcase the most of the creature. When what I had in mind for this uh, drawing video was that I was just focusing on doing a creature. I wasn't trying to put it in an environment or anything. Um, and particularly for concept design, um, you generally want to uh, pose your character in the way that you can see the most about it. Um, particularly if, I mean, not for this, but like in a job, it might get handed over to say a modeler or someone, it may not be its final form. <laughs> um, so the modeler needs to see the most about it. If, especially if you're not doing more than one like image um so but i still liked the fruit bat wings um with fairy dragons i obviously had the room to do butterfly wings or dragonfly wings and i got a whole bunch of reference images for that um but i am partial to uh the classic um bat wing variety um and i liked the opportunity of actually sort of looking at some proper um you know, anatomy for wings. Admittedly, now looking at the sketch, I know where I stuffed up on the rear wing. Um, I because I used the photo as reference, I didn't think about the spatial that initial shoulder bone where it bends that you can see in the in the front wing. Um, I haven't given enough room for that on the back wing, so that's forever <laughs> sticking out to me now. Um, Y'all probably don't notice, but you know. Um, so yeah, so I decided not to bother with doodling, uh, the upside down dragon, because I went, nah, I know I like this one, uh, let's get into it. Grabbed a bunch of my reference images just to put around the edge of my sketch, so that I could constantly refer to it instead of flipping back and forth. Um, I was really into the idea of some poisonous frogs, because the pole was neck and neck between fairy dragon and poisonous dragon, and I admit I was kind of intrigued about the idea of doing a poisonous dragon, so I may have snuck a few elements in here, um, namely and there's a little hidden stinger on the tail, and I wanted to try and incorporate some of these colourful patterns from uh, these poisonous frogs. Um, and I thought even if I've got bat wings, uh, the bat wings could still have some butterfly, mosquito-esque patterning on the, the bat-like shaped wings. Anyway, that was my thinking. Um, I also took, like, a couple of these reference images had very sort of, like, feathery gossamer, like, appendages coming off, uh, the crown of the dragon, where normally with the bigger dragons you see, like, spines and stuff. Um, and I thought that was pretty, like, aesthetically pleasing. Sort of like, you know, how we know that dinosaurs are descended from birds. Um, I like the idea of these sort of, like, gossamer feathery kind of things coming out of the joints. Um, so I've got them sort of poking out of the elbows and the ankles as well. Um, I think I saw that on some of the pictures. Yeah, you can see that on the top one, the sort of sinewy, snaky fairy dragon. Um... So yeah, so now I'm, I'm sort of going over and refining my sketch. I'm really happy with that head. I think that's really cool. Um, on another, uh, you know, if I was spending more time on this, I would get really definitive on those scales because I know that makes a difference to me. Um, but I like the sort of um, pebble stoniness of the frogs. So I kind of wanted that to come through more than say uh, scales. Because, um, again, this guy is, I'm imagining, fairly small. Um, you know, small cat size. Uh, maybe smaller. Um, I did. I listened to a couple of videos while I was doing this about um, the sort of the lore of D&D &D monsters, particularly on fairy dragons and pseudo dragons. And I didn't know there was so much difference. Um, so pseudo dragons are like tiny cats. They can be, like, 
really tiny or cat size, but they don't talk. They make sort of cat noises. Um, great pets. Um, but turns out fairy dragons are very intelligent and can live for a very long time. And as they get older, they change colors and they um, gain more spells to the point where they can masquerade as human and they like to play tricks on people or human or whatever they want. They can change their form, um, which I think is really, really neat. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if this guy is actually a fairy dragon or a pseudo dragon, but uh, at this point, I'm just kind of going with it. <laughs> um, for those of you who have followed my art for a very, very long time, I used to draw uh, a little dragon called Jury, um, who is essentially my muse, my, my little imaginary friend. Um, and I think he's definitely coming through here. Um, yeah, <laughs> it just makes me happy thinking about him. Anyway, so I, um, I cleaned up my drawing, um, very quickly sort of selected the negative space and then inverted it to try and create this block fill layer. Um, because my sketch was rough, it wasn't completely enclosed. So the, the selection tool, d like, is a bit messy but it's quicker than say hand painting it so I've just gone through and cleaned up the edges with the intent of copying that fill layer and transforming it down um, to create a shadow um, so I know um, people are like oh wow how do you get so much detail in the shadow such a simple trick if you are planning for it um, to flip that image um, and blur it um, and then what I do is I put a little mask on it and I get it to fade away a bit, you know, add some gradients and stuff um, so that it's not a perfectly harsh, harsh crisp shadow because no shadow ever is. Um, so it's, it's enough of an amalgamation of shadow. Like it, it's, it's, it's good enough for now. Um, nice quick way to solve that. Um, all right, so with the line layer, um, you would have seen I just quickly um, clipped um, a layer above it and uh, painted over the wing section because I want the wing to sort of feel a little bit more translucent or lighter. Um, I struggle with this a lot because um, I, I didn't plan as well for the translucency of the wings um, because of the fact that I'm using a solid fill layer. Um, I actually needed to do the wings in a, as a separate piece that could be um, made more opaque. Um, I should have had the body and the wings separate. Um, but I will try and work on that later. <laughs> um, sometimes with painting, you just have to kind of recover from your own silly, silly steps. Um, anyway, moving on. Eyeballs. Um, I love doing details. Uh, I did have to sort of mess with this, the resolution of my painting because it wasn't as high a resolution as I had intended. Um, so I'm just changing the line layer to be sort of a color. Um, something I've learned recently is that I used to rely really heavy on black line. Um, and that's fine for a technique, but something I, I'm starting to become really partial to is colored line. Um, because I feel like it softens the image a little bit, makes it a little bit more organic. Um, so I always try and, uh, change the color of my line so that it's just, even if it's really dark, it's still like a warm color, like a warm brown or a warm red. Um, yeah, so, and then I, obviously I can tint sections of my line to, to match things like the wings. Um, so now I'm painting in some shadows. Uh, again, all of these layers are clipped to my original fill layer, so I don't have to worry about going outside the edges, um, which saves you so much time. Um, and yeah, so now I'm just sort of having fun filling in um, details. Um, I'm mainly looking at my top left frog, uh, the red and blue one. Um, I think I just sort of settled on that one pretty quickly. Could have been any of those frogs. I mean, the little tiny one with the orange back has got some cool spots on it. Um, but yeah, I thought the, the warm red and the blue cool was really eye-catching. So I'm trying to translate that into this dragon. Um, and I think I, uh, I try to, to create areas of like less vibrancy because um, otherwise everything's going to be really bright and that's really hard to look at. Um, so the body is sort of meant to be a little bit more of that neutral tone with the head being warmer and the wings being the spectacular bit. 
Um, so now I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Uh, at this point, I sort of like got a bit lost. Um, just sort of experimenting with different um, layer modes. Um, sometimes when I'm not really sure where the color um, is going, um, I'll do that. This is the point where I'm trying to like get the wings a little bit more opaque or a little bit more transparent. It would be easier if I had a background because then I could let some of the background show through and you would, it, it would read a lot easier that they were meant to be a little bit more transparent. So at the moment I'm just trying to erase sections of the wings so that they're not as you know, intense. I didn't, that didn't really work. Um, now I have to apologize at this point. I've realized, um, I lost my final hour of painting, um, because I went and got a drink, came back and forgot to press play or record. Um, so this is a shorter video than my normal ones. Um, uh, so you will get to see the sort of jump from, uh, midway to final result. I'm really sorry about that guys. Um, but I mean, got a long video last, last, uh, month. I'll, uh, I'll remember to do it better next month, I swear. Um, so as always, my trusty paper texture fill, um, has come in, um, as a, just a nice, like, I don't like white canvas. I really don't. Um, there's also a paper texture fill over the top of the dragon, just so that it's not too smooth. Um, and I'm just messing around at the moment with like, um, some hue saturation and some more gradients clipped to my fill layer. Um, sometimes when I get a bit messy, I just like put everything into uh, a group um, and then clip to the group because um, I'm afraid of compressing my layers. Um, and it means that I can still clip to that sort of shape that I've built, um, but it's now in a group instead of um, just one layer. Um, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, at this point, I started go just getting in with my textured painting brush. Um, again, clip to that group layer um, and started to knock back those lines um, and start to try and concentrate on color and form that I've sort of inferred at this point. Um, start to give them a little bit more um, polish. Um, sort of get the speckling in on the, the scales, get some lighting in. And yeah, essentially I'm trying to paint over the lines that are there at the moment. So it's less about a sketchy line and more about a painted creature. Um, I do like the color scheme I've ended up with now. I think the more um, sort of slightly a bit more pastel is nice. Uh, it was I've always been told I have vibrant colors in my painting and while I don't mind that, I'd like to choose when and where I do that um, instead of just being sort of controlled by my vibrancy. Um, and sometimes when you've got a specific point of vibrancy and everything else is satur like sort of desaturated, um, you're gonna have more of a focal point on the picture whereas if everything's bright, you don't know where you're looking. Um, so that's what I was just doing just then. I was sort of selecting uh, the back areas of the dragon that um, would be sort of uh, further away from you. Um, and this is the point where I lost my, my painting. So <laughs> you can see I sort of carried that, uh, those details through and I kept painting away the original sketch lines, um, namely in the face. Uh, I was really happy with that face. Um, the wings never really got that transparency, but I mean, if I come back to this little guy, I'll put him in like a, maybe a grassy field and then you'll really feel that, um, some undergrowth. <laughs> anyway, he's really cute. I hope you like him. <laughs> Thanks.